The recording is on, and you said what? Chapter 12, Chapter verse 12, 11? Chapter 12, verse 11. Okay. There we go. They overcame him by the blood of the no, Lamb. No, that's and the... the wrong one. All right. Which one? Oh, it was the one where I, uh, we did chapter 12 yesterday. Uh-huh. Uh, it was, it was chapter 11 or verse 11. Okay. You got, you got a different version up here today, right? Uh, I got the NIV up today. Yeah. yeah. Let's keep the NIV. That's fine. Cause okay. that's, that, that's why it looked different to me. So it okay. says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Yes. So I, I clearly have this like uh, underlined in my Bible. And somebody explained this lesson one time before. And, and like these are absolutes. These are not suggestions right now. Right. And, right. and when it says uh, their lives so much as to shrink from death, that is the fear of death. So here's the absolutes. Okay. We will overcome by absolute number one, the, the blood of the lamb. And we'll overcome by absolute number two, the word of testimony. And we'll overcome absolute by not fearing death. Amen. So I'm, I guess I would just want to stress the importance of that about, you know, not fearing death and, and overcoming by testimony and, and the blood of Jesus. As Amen. we go through end times, you have to have that like warrior spirit like that. You do. And we always have to remember you know, that, uh, and that'll be part of the message from Psalms 11 later, uh, that uh, we all have a, a race to run. And until our race is run, no one is going to be able to destroy us. But if it is the time that our race is run, then the worst that can happen to us is the best thing that can happen to us. And so we need not fear death. And in fact, the most feared person on the face of the earth is the person who no longer fears death. Because the, the, the most that someone can do to you and I as true believers is to kill our physical body. And that's only if our race has been run. If our race has not been run, then no one's going to be able to destroy us. Now, they may be able to afflict us. They may be able to shut us up they may be able to lock us up in prison and all kinds of things like that but nobody can destroy god's will for your life until that will is fulfilled and then your race is run and then he's simply going to carry you home to glory and that's the greatest escapism that there is and we don't just wish for that escapism we wish to stand and to glorify the lord in our life as well as glorifying him in our death. Uh, think of Samson. Samson, though he made made a lot of wrong moves and made a lot of bad decisions, in his last attempt, he said, let me tear down one last time this stronghold of the Philistines, and then I'm ready to come home. And so the Lord gave him his mighty strength back for a little bit, and he tore down the pillars of the temple of the Philistines and destroyed it. And so if you and I would have that same resolve, give me your mighty strength, O God, to tear down these strongholds that you are setting before me before you call me home so that I might glorify you in my death as well as I've attempted to glorify you in my life. Amen? Amen. That's tough for a lot of us who are squeamish and skirmish and kind of uh, skittish at heart. You know, uh, we don't have a lot of strength or, or boldness or courage. And uh, I can identify with that because I really don't either by myself, but I'm mighty in the Lord. And when he gives us a holy boldness, we can stand in that holy boldness and not be concerned about what man might think or about, or about what man might do. Amen. Amen. Okay. Any other, anything else left over from yesterday on chapter 12? Clear as mud for everybody, right? <laughs> Just as a reminder, once again, the curtain was pulled back, and we got to see the real battle that's taking place between light and darkness, or between the dragon or Satan, and, of course, the light which represents the light of God and the, especially the light of Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. 
And so uh, in that chapter, we got to see all of the attempts of the enemy to put out that light and to extinguish that light. And then we got to see the, the final victory of light, not only by God's people in verse 11, like we were looking at, but also in verses 12 and on, when uh, it shows us that the dragon was uh, hurled to the earth along with the third of the angels that had joined him in the rebellion. And then, uh, you know, as we continue marching through the rest of Revelation, we'll see that even though the devil is giving full power for this last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation, because like we were talking about yesterday, uh, the enemy will never be able to say from the pit, God, you never gave me a chance. If you'd have just gave me full power for a short period of time, I could have turned the whole world against you and proved to you that they were phony. So during this great tribulation, Satan is going to be given all power to have full control, but he's only under the control that God's allowing him to have. And in the end, God will withdraw that authority, temporary authority that he gives to the enemy, and he will then cast him into the lake of fire forever and ever. Amen? Amen. So we're on uh, chapter 13. So let me move back to chapter 13. Is the NIV translation okay with everybody? Yes, fine. Okay, we had been doing the New King James before, uh, mm -hmm. but the NIV is a little bit easier for some of you to understand. So we can stay in the NIV today. That's fine. I love the New King James because that's what I memorized and learned, uh, you know, coming up as a, a young minister and as a young Christian. And so when I quote scripture, it's most often a combination of New King James and King James combined together. And so uh, with that said, we'll move on. So uh, for those of you who are new to the group today, the way that we normally uh, go about this is that uh, we allow somebody to read a few passages of the scripture, and then they can expound themselves or ask questions, and then uh, we'll have a discussion about it. And then if, and if so be, then the Lord will allow me to share a few things as well. So we're going to read uh, one through four. Who would like to read that? I'll do that. Okay. And the dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads with ten crowns on his horns, and on each head a blasphemous name, the beast I saw resemble a leopard. He had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was astonished and followed the beast. Men worshiped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. And they also worshiped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can make war against him? So what is he saying? So for the, let me, let me uh, expound upon that for the ones that are new uh, real quick here, uh, Pat. Uh, we kind of run this group by the premise of uh, ask good questions, you get good answers. And so uh, when you're reading the Word of God, ask good questions. Ask who's speaking, who are they speaking to, what are they saying, why are they saying what they are saying, and then so what? What's that got to do with me? How does this apply to my relationship and my life with the Lord today? Okay. So ask those good questions when you're reading and studying, and you will get good answers. All right, go ahead, Pat. What was you going to say? I'm curious, is the dragon the devil? Yes. And who's the beast? Mm, who do you think it is? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I didn't know they were one and the same. Or, but... What's the description of the beast? Uh, has ten horns and seven heads with ten crowns on his horns. I guess I don't really know what that is, though. <laughs> okay. 
says he looks like a leopard with feet like a bear and a mouth like a lion, right? Yeah. So what do you think those all represent? I'm, I'm clueless here. <laughs> think about how a, how does a leopard attack? Or a panther. Panther might be a better word here. It pounce. Yeah, they pounces. Pounce. It's swift, right? It's speedily, yeah. right? Yep. Throughout all of the history of the world, the one with the fastest army usually wins the victory. The one who arrives at the place first with the most resources usually wins the victory. That has been true throughout all of the history of the world and the battles that have been fought. If you look at Napoleon or Alexander the Great or any of them, they had the ability to move their armies quickly into position and they had the right resources to win the victory. Gotcha. Right? So the leopard represents that. Okay. What about the bear? How does the bear go about his business? <laughs> They're just big. Yeah. Is he swift? Oh, yeah. Is the bear swift? No, he just stumbles along, right? Yeah. He knows yeah. nobody can defeat him, so he just kind of moves himself into place and dares anybody to stand against him, right? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. What about the lion? Ferocious. I didn't hear that. Oh, he's a king of the jungle. I mean, he's... He is, right? Yeah. He... Power. Power, right? So the lion is powerful. He's loud, right? Yeah. There's blasphemous things that come out of his mouth. His roar, right? His roar will be loud, right? Yeah. I have a question there. Go ahead. <clears throat> you said blasphemous. What is the definition of blasphemous? Anything that stands against God or the will of God is a blasphemous thing, right? So anything that tries to exclude God or diminish God in any way is a blasphemous thing, right? So with those two definitions, exclude or diminish, what do you think this is? Would that be the Antichrist? It's the Antichrist. It's the political Antichrist, right? And the political Antichrist also has control of what? The government, the armies, right? And all of those things. Has, the, has control of the power and the might of those armies, right? And the power and the might of government to be able to subdue the people through law or imprisonment or whatever else, right? What are the 10... The seven heads or the ten crowns uh, of, of horns, or the, uh, what do those represent? No idea. This goes back to the vision of Daniel in the book of Daniel mm -hmm. and the four beasts that he saw in the book of Daniel. Uh, I am believing that the uh, United Nations, the, the, the leader of the United Nations is going to be the Antichrist soon. And, and so I would imagine these 10 horns and seven heads and 10 crowns will be the structure that the United Nations is going to set up sometime in the future. That, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. I think that's a good thought. Anybody else? I've heard that before, too that the united nations were going to was going to be the antichrist and so yesterday we were talking about how that the roman empire was never defeated it was dismantled from within because of their drunken orgies and immorality right and then it was divided amongst four kings that kind of disappeared into the nations of the world right so the Roman Empire was never defeated. It dismantled from within because of immorality and drunkenness and orgies, right? 
A lot of people see America in that today. We consume more alcohol than any nation on the face of the earth. Hmm. And we use more prescription and illicit drugs than any nation on the face of the earth. America has been crumbling from within for decades now. Immorality is the result of the drunkenness and the witchcraft or the use of pharmaceuticals, right? Hmm. Remember when we would talk about the pharmacia back a few chapters before? I do. Questions or comments? Insights? Pastor Dale, I went back to Daniel chapter 7. Uh huh. And in my commentary, it says the angel told John that the ten horns were ten kings. Most likely, these would be ten rulers who will rule under the Antichrist. The number ten may be literal. It may be likely symbolize the total or totality of the powers on earth that will subserve the Antichrist in war against Christ. Amen. So in that, you can see some different things. Either a revived Holy Roman Empire, right? We talked about that flag yesterday. Remember that coat of arms and how it appeared briefly on the screen about a year ago? Nothing that is hidden that shall not be brought to light. And if you listen to what people are saying, out of the mouth speaks the abundance of their heart. What is in their heart will come out of their mouth. And so the Lord has all through the last few years been allowing little things to escape out that help us to hear and to see what is actually going on, right? It's being revealed through their mouths and it has been revealed through their actions, right? Because they're one and the same. So this is a revived Holy Roman Empire, which may exist in the United Nations as Rick suggested. You know, the League of Nations like many, many, many years ago, or even all the way back to the Tower of Babel of many, many, many years ago, right? Regardless of what it is or whether it's the humanistic, you know, society, the humanistic manifesto that we were talking about the other day, uh, whether it is that, uh, you know, or whatever it is, it's a political giant that's going to be empowered by the beast that is going to be risen to power, right? And it may be happening before our very eyes, or at least the beginnings of it, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? What about one of the heads of the beast seemed to be have a fatal wound, but the fatal wound was healed? Anybody? I have some insight would... on that one. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, the fatal head wound, uh, it would be who I believe the Antichrist is. And I, I really don't want to say his name. It's just one of the things I want to do in my ministry is just to, uh, you know, he was a former president of the United States. And, uh, and, and so when John was writing the book of Revelation, there was never a, uh, uh, a king never had a term limit, so he never had that terminology, and because a king would re reign until they died. So, uh, so one of the the fatal head wound might not necessarily be a physical wound. It may be that this said antichrist figure was the the leader of the world at one time, and then he was not no longer the leader of the world at another time, and that he will become the leader of the world again. So the guy that I have picked as the Antichrist will be the, he would have been the leader of the world at one time, and then he's going to be the leader of the United Nations in the future. So that, that's, that's what I have to say about the head wound. Okay. And I received that. Anybody else? I got some, Pastor Darrell. This is Kevin. So um, I'm reading on my uh, section in my Bible, uh, talks about the, the fatal wound. We talk about the healing. Right, uh, it's saying the possible to sh to show that Satan already once tried to steal the authority of Christ, who rules because of his death and resurrection. Resurrection, the um, 
the image also suggests that the beast is not easily killed when one evil empire falls, another appears. Uh -huh. I received that as well, right? Anybody else? Has there been, again, anything else on the face of the earth which had received what might have been considered a fatal wound, yet has recovered? I mean, the only thing I can think of is uh, if it has fully covered, but it has tampered, but the... Uh, when uh, they strike the, the, the towers back in 9-11. Uh-huh. When who struck how, the towers? Huh? When who struck the towers? Well, my theory, we did. <laughs> <laughs> we, we use those things to try to implement our own power in, in, in our own government to deceive and when they use that they use that to, to to put fear in us and to depend on them and say this is why we need to go to war and we they had their own you know agenda which in government we all you know they always have an agenda right you know so um yeah i mean that that was that was the that i saw um was destroyed and, and no go ahead go ahead no go ahead. I no gonna... i I, have, I received that and i agree with you totally uh we were talking yesterday if you remember that we've always uh throughout the history of the world chosen the lesser of the two bullies you know whether that was the iran contras or uh you know i mean whether the the contras back uh, during uh uh the uh a few 30 30 years ago or so or uh, whether it was between Fatah and, and Hezbollah today, or uh, whatever it's been, whether it was the setting up of Saddam Hussein as a puppet king, we've always uh, sided with uh, one thing or the other. Both of them were usually terrorist organizations, but we would side with the, the least uh, aggressive of the two, or the, at least the one that we didn't want to win, we would side with the other side. Uh, when Russia attacked Af Afghanistan, we uh, backed uh, basically what has become now ISIS and and uh, all of the rest of uh, uh, the uh, the terrorists of the world. Uh, we backed mm -hmm. them with arms and everything else, trained them in war and everything, because we didn't want Russia to win, right? Right. And so we have done things like that all throughout the history of the world. And uh, so uh, you know, you think of. You know how it's sided with that we have sided with the Fatah side of the terrorist organizations, and the Fatah side is run by the PA and its leader Yasser Arafat. I'm not a I'm not a so unbold. I won't name him by name, okay? And uh, so uh, we given him the Nobel Peace Prize for killing millions, and uh, and so he's been in bed with. You know, a lot of the uh, politicians of the world and some of the religions of the world for a long, long time now. And uh, there's a reviving of things that were once uh, put down. And so I encouraged everybody to do their studies on the Ottoman Empire and how all of these things fit together. It's not just one or the other folks. It's a conglomeration of them all, okay, uh, as they bring uh, this thing into being. And so it starts with the political leader, and then in the, the very next time will be the religious leader, right? So the beast out of the sea and the beast out of the earth. There have been many people throughout history believe that the crown, which is hidden in London today, is a part of that beast out of the sea. Great Britain once ruled the seas uh, with their navy, and they conquered most of the known world with that. And uh, even the, the Great Britain, the, the, the empire of Great Britain has been hiding in the royals now for many, many, many years. And yet uh, its true power and crown is in the city of London itself. And so everybody's believed that, you know, that aligned with 
the Rockefellers and everybody else, uh, the, the rich and the affluent of the world would uh, raise up this revised kingdom or this revised Tower of Babel. And uh, so a lot of those things come into play as well. Any other insights, thoughts, inputs, criticisms? <clears throat> well, someone that's been wounded was Trump. I mean, they tried to impeach him, and I would say <laughs> certainly wounded, but I don't know if he's in the category. <laughs> Very true, right? I mean, well, why, was, uh, why was Trump almost impeached? Let's talk about that for a moment. The Democrats don't want him in office. Just the Democrats? That's no, the I, people. The people in general. So the whole the whole country. Anybody ever read his book Make America Great Again? No. No. No, you should read it. Trump stood against the established government, right? And he angered every single one of them. All of the media, all of all, both branches of the government, including all of the rich and the affluent and everybody, have been against Trump ever since he has made his declarations about what he was going to do, right? Fair trade with China. He was going to eliminate globalization and uh, stop America from being misused in the international trade business. And so all of these things were going to put an end to the globalization of America. Right, mm -hmm. or the globalization of the world and all of those things. And so the entire thing came against him, right? Trying to remove him from office. So they they failed thus far in their attempts, but the election's coming up now. And here we are, uh, you know, they really can't even get out in the campaign trail and uh, campaign. And he's being made to look like a fool in the midst of this coronavirus crisis, right, by all of the media and all of the world, right? So his chances of re-election are being diminished more and more every day, right? But that's just so that they can put the person in charge they want in charge. So do you believe he's still in charge? No. Yeah. I believe he's, I believe he's, he's the puppet king. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's in control right now? <laughs> that message is coming up. Can I can I say who I believe I think is in control? Sure. Go ahead. FEMA. Okay. You know, FEMA C D C man, because once he met that national uh emergencies, you know, that, that gave them control because of what's happening with the coronavirus the disease that is happening and they have put that had gave them the power once he signed that constitution That's they're just puppets too though look a lot deeper they're yeah. just puppets as well look a lot deeper well i i believe they are they all are puppets until the coming but i'm saying like he had gave that control over to them right now and yeah he has no say in anything because I don't know if you ever watched the press conference with him. They said something that the doctor was saying things and he was like, you didn't never tell me that it was, it was a muffle underneath his breath saying, you, you, you know, I never shared that with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, that, that was just my opinion of what I thought. No. And I, and I received that. I'm just, I'm just challenging to go much deeper because those that okay. are looking as though they have control are not really the ones in control. They're just the puppets. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you got to look a whole lot deeper than that. Think all the way back to the tower of Babel and think about what was built and everything there and what, what was wounded but has still always continued to exist is Babylon itself. Mm -hmm. And the great whore of Babylon, later on in the book of Revelation, it will be announced that the great whore of Babylon has finally been defeated, right? Once and for all. So what you have to look for is where is Babylon today, right? And how is it raising back up and rising back up to a Tower of Babel to do the same thing that Nimrod attempted to do with it in the very beginning, right? So, Pastor Darrell, are you one of those that believe that uh, 
the, the Jews who say they're Jews, but they're not Jews are the ones controlling everything behind the scenes? Are, are you believing in that? Well, who are the ones who are Jews who say they are not Jews? Or who are the ones who are not Jews who say they are? I guess is the good question. Well, it, for example, the ones that are, that I believe like are the Jews that say they're Jews, but they're not Jews. To me, that would be like, like uh, Goldman Sachs and Citibank and, and all the big financial institutions and, and, and uh, like the, the Jewish, the so-called Jewish people that control Hollywood. That, that would be who I believe are the Jews that say they're Jews and they're not Jews. Because there, there'd be a lot of evil behind that, obviously. So, True. Uh, you know, that, that's just what I'm thinking. And, and they basically tell Trump what to do. Very true. Are there, are there, are there people in Jerusalem today who claim they are Jews, but they are not Jews? Probably. That'd be the modern day Pharisees? The Palestinian Authority, the PLO, claims that they have rights to the land, and yet they are the Philistines in disguise. They are direct descendants of the Philistines. They're not Jews, though they claim that Jerusalem belongs to them. And this whole battle forever has been about that. They are part of the Gentiles who have been trampling down Jerusalem ever since the, that the uh, city of Jerusalem was destroyed in AD 70. It's been the time of the Gentiles since then. Again, back to the book of Daniel, right? So it's a conglomeration of all of these coming together as a political leader. They're going to they're going to put forth a puppet <clears throat> king. They're going to put forth even a public a, pu a puppet regime. But the real power behind it is going to be a conglomeration of everything that's just been talked about. Right. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments. You're full of it. Anything? <laughs> well, I'm, no. I'm still going back to the question. You said that before before that about the Tower of Babylon today. And my mind is going 100 miles an hour, but I don't know in which direction to think at. I have a question. Sure. Um, we talked about the, the Muslim religion a little bit yesterday. Do they Are they going to play in this any? Absolutely. Have they already? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like a Trojan horse, they've slipped in under the skies of peace and now have military outposts in every college campus and every place within the United States itself. A guy just uh, messaged me with a declaration in Minnesota that during Ramadan they're going to uh, I, I can forward it to you but they're in Minnesota they're making uh, provisions for prayer five times a day for Ramadan but again it's just the ones who are the who are the ones who are rising to power using even that for their own political and economic gain right okay so it was allowed into the country and disguised and declared to be peace for a reason right it's just like we've used every every organization we wanted to throughout the history to accomplish our own purposes <clears throat> same thing will happen again right right well, I'll share this with you. Um, we had a little discussion back and forth, and and uh, and I told him that, you know, we were talking about the Muslim religion yesterday, and they even believe in Jesus, but they don't believe he was God. They believe he was a prophet. And I shared that with him, and then he wouldn't uh, come back with anything. He's cut off the discussion. Right. 
They believe that he was a prophet of Allah and that he is Messiah. But as Messiah, he's only uh, preparing the way for Muhammad to reappear. Right? So a lot of things going on. And each and every one of them by themselves is not the only answer. It's a conglomerate of them all. Right? Anybody else? That's only four <laughs> verses, folks. <laughs> well, usually if you're at war and you want to defeat your enemy, that uh, you follow the money and you try to cut the money source off. True. Cut the supply lines, right? If you can stop the supply to the advancing army, then you can cause them to freeze to death, starve to death, and run out of fuel, right? That was right. a tactic in World War II, right? been a tactic in all of the wars right yeah so what have we been stockpiling for years it's only beginning to reveal itself even during this coronavirus you can see how that we have stockpiled everything over the last 50 years they were able to just pull out of the woodwork all of these medical supplies and all these things that they've been stockpiling right so who's got the toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever does is rich, right? <laughs> All right, verses uh, five through eight. Somebody want to read that, and then we'll call that a day. I'll go ahead and read it. Go ahead. The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise exercised its authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. It was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. Amen. So what is he saying? <clears throat> well, the beast will be given power to exercise its authority for the what, 42 months. 42 months, three and a half years, yeah. right? So he's going to be given all authority, but it's only for a short time, right? And it's against the people that are don't have their name in the book of life. Right? What else? Verse 7. Oh, he's going to conquer the saints. He's, he's given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. Right? Again, do not be afraid of death. Start thinking about by what death you can glorify the Lord, right? Because that decision could be coming, right? You cannot die, folks. The good news is that you cannot die. The second death has no power over you. You are God's people, right? And if he would allow, the world can take your physical life, but they cannot kill you. Right? Sorry about that. I can't get it to shut it off either. So there we go. So, what if I that don't was pretty like verse bad, seven don't very it? Well. Huh? I said, what if I don't like verse seven very well? I know. Yeah. <laughs> It, yeah, it really doesn't matter whether we like it, does it? Because it's there, right? Yeah, right. I accept it. I accept yeah, it. and uh, so you know, we like Job. You know, when you like when you read the book of Job, we might go, "But why would God allow something like that?" Because that's not the God I've been led to picture in my mind. He's a God of love and a God of grace and a God who protects his people. So why would he allow evil to conquer us? 
Why would he allow evil to rule and to reign, right? And it goes right back to looking, you know, throughout all of the history of the world and the word of God, you know. Folks, this is a time of examination. Mm -hmm. Remember when I told you uh, as we finished up Colossians, the, uh, you know, Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians, we did basically discipleship 101 in six weeks. And I said that there would be an exam that would follow. And then I didn't follow through with it yet, but it might still be coming. But this is a time of an exam. You're being examined right now, right? <laughs> You're being examined as to who are you? Who are you really if you peel back the, the curtain of, your, of, of the way that you make yourself appear and the masks that you put on out in society each and every day. Who are you? Because who you really are needs to stand up. Right? Yeah. And Pastor, we, we could talk a little bit about verse 7 uh, once you're done recording as well. Sure. Anybody else before we go? Uh, we won't expound upon really those yet because we kind of already did in many ways expound upon it. So what, what, what did I say about the rapture? What did you say about it? I said, what do it say about the rapture? What do it say about the rapture? There's a lot mm -hmm. of different beliefs about that, right? The, mm -hmm. uh, the pre, uh, the pre uh, view sees us gone after uh, the chapter four in Revelation as before the tribulation even begins. Others see it in the midway point or just before all of this begins to happen that the church is taken out of the way so that all of this can happen. Because what hinders right now is the spirit-filled church, the blood-bought spirit-filled church of God, the true believers, right? Right. What will be the most amazing thing is who's left behind. But even then, they'll have a chance for salvation. There'll be many people saved during the tribulation and even the great tribulation. But it won't be an easy believism. Right. So, but, but my question to that was because based on what chapter seven said, I mean, uh, verse seven said in chapter 13. <laughs> so let's understand again, who are the saints of God? We are. Okay. Believers are right. Yes. So the, the, the books before this, Tell us that the eyes of Israel were open. The Old Testament saints are again spoken of here. You need to, again, always ask yourself the question, who's speaking? Who are they speaking to? What are they saying? Why are they saying what they're saying? And so what? How does that apply to me? Right? So who's mm -hmm. speaking here? God is speaking through John. Right? And he's telling us something. Right? He's speaking to Israel. Right? And the Old Testament saints in this old, in this great tribulation period are going to be protected by God until their time of what he's going to do through, with, through them is over. And then he's going to allow them to be defeated and glorify him in their death. Right? But they are coming to heaven along with all the rest. You'll see that at the end. Right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So these saints here, in my opinion, and in my belief, are not New Testament saints. These are Old Testament saints whose eyes have now been opened. Remember, all of Israel is still waiting for the Messiah to come. They don't believe he's come yet. They're waiting for him. In chapter 10, he opens their eyes to see that it's him. Right? Right? And 144,000 of them are sealed to be God's witnesses. Remember, we were talking about it once before. If 12 anointed Jews could turn the world upside down at the beginning of the church, can you imagine what 144,000 anointed Jews are going to be able to do during the tribulation and the great tribulation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So God is through with what he's doing with them, and then he'll allow them to be conquered. Hey, Pastor. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've been <laughs> I've been out. Well, I, that's why I'm not on video with you guys yet. 
but um, uh, I've been listening in. It's been really interesting. Uh, two things. One, you talked about the rapture. And like I said, I think I mentioned yesterday, my pastor at one of the churches, and I don't know if you got to that because I got distracted with a phone call, um, that some don't even believe there will be one. And that's what he was challenging me to find is where does it actually say in Revelation that there's actually going to be a rapture? <laughs> kind of to go with that and what you said about the test. Um I had one, we had a study on this once, and I remember we had this 80 some year old lady saying, You know, when they try to get you to take the mark of the beast, we don't know what kind of tactics they'll use, and it could be they're threatening to kill your kids or somebody else in the other room or right there in front of you, saying, Take it or else we, we're going to torture this person. So, it, and it's stuff that people in the Middle East have already been living with. I mean, the ones that got their the Nazarene, the end put on their doors and all that. You know, we've been blessed to not have to deal with those things, but obviously there's, it's, it's a hard thing to think about. You know, are you going to be able to stay true even if your kids are being tortured with, you know, it, it's um, definitely not an easy part of the teaching of the gospel. But Absolutely. No, I, I hear that and receive that. Yeah, that's the problem with the prosperity teaching is they seem to miss that part where Christ says that you're going to be persecuted because you believe in me. And I, you know, I don't know until I get there what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do my best to stay true. I, I'm working on the foundation so that the choice is there when I get there. Kind of like any emergency procedure I used to learn in my helicopter. You practice, 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 hoping it never happens, but when it does, it should be automatic, kind of like if you're learning how to play an instrument. You you get muscle memory. It does the right thing even if you're not sure why, but it, you've trained yourself to do the right thing. So, Okay, so I, I received that. Um, so let me end the recording part with this, and then if you want to hang around and keep talking, we can. Uh, remember what we've been proclaiming all through this, folks, right? That... Um, Paul said it this way. Paul said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. We don't like to quote the second part. We only want to know the power of his resurrection. And as far as salvation is concerned, we want the blood and we want to be saved from the wrath to come, but we don't want the Lordship. We don't want the spirit of Christ ruling and reigning in his temple. We want to do it our way. And so we settle for half of a salvation instead of the whole thing. And it's a very dangerous place to put yourselves. And it's a very thing that you're going to be tried on uh, during these days. Right? With that said, I'm going to stop the recording right there. And.